Ah, Florida, the tropical state in the least tropical time of the year. Today in Florida, we'll be talking about one of the state's most important highways, Interstate 4. I-4 runs 132 miles through the cities of Tampa, Lakeland, Orlando, and Daytona Beach. It meets Interstates 75 and 95, it is the primary route used to access Disney World, and it used to be the lowest interstate in the system before I-2 was built. I-4 begins at a somewhat convoluted T interchange with Interstate 275 in downtown Tampa, where 4 goes west through downtown. The interstate meets US-41 and US-301 while in downtown, before meeting a turbine interchange with Interstate 75. Along the way to Lakeland, we meet several smaller exits, including those from Mango, Dover, and Plant City. Eventually, we meet a trumpet interchange for Florida 570 on the outside of Lakeland. This is followed up by exits with state routes 539 and 33, as well as US-98, before meeting 570 again on the other side of the city. Outside of Davenport, we meet US-27, and we continue northeast into the outskirts of Orlando. Orlando is already a big city, but it's made even bigger by the fact that we meet Walt Disney World on the southwestern side of it. In fact, there are seven exits in total that are used to access Disney World. This doesn't even factor in the highways inside the park. Like seriously, my mind cannot wrap itself around the idea of a resort being so big that it needs highways inside of its boundaries. Either way, getting back on I-4 before I lose my sanity over an anthropomorphic mouse company, the interstate meets US-192 and Florida 528 before turning north to enter downtown Orlando. We also meet the Florida Turnpike, as well as Universal Studios alongside it. Man, this route's just filled with tourist traps. In downtown Orlando, we meet the routes of US-441, Florida-408, Florida-50, and Florida-423. Continuing primarily north, we meet several smaller state routes on the northern outskirts of Orlando. Eventually, we meet Florida-429 and Lake Monroe, which if you remember, we met all the way back before Disney World, though I may not have mentioned it. Also in Lake Monroe, we meet State Route 46 and US Route 17 before crossing the actual Lake Monroe itself, which, might I add, is huge. After this, we have several smaller exits in Deltona, though we don't meet any major routes until Florida 44 on the northern edge of the city. Following this is a long stretch of forested swampland in which Interstate 4 has no exits until a final one-way exit with US 92, before curving due east to end at a mutated cloverleaf interchange in Daytona Beach, in which traffic is directed onto North Interstate 95. Interstate 4 may not be the longest interstate, but it is without a doubt an important east-to-west corridor across southern Florida, connecting several tourist attractions and big cities together. The route does, however, have some interesting history behind it. I-4 contains some of the oldest sections of interstate in Florida, with the first segment of the route being constructed outside of Lakeland in 1959. The whole route was complete and ready to go by the 70s. For the longest time, I-4 was actually signed with sequential exit numbering, meaning exits were numbered based on their order and not their mileage. This was, however, changed in recent years to fall in line with the majority of the system. Here's a fun fact. There's a section of Interstate 4 between Orlando and Daytona Beach that is said to be haunted. Rumor has it that people are more likely to die driving this segment of I-4 than anywhere else on the route. But is this true? No, of course not. Or is it? The ECFRPC, I hope I said that right, launched a study a few years ago in which they attempted to determine if a section of Interstate 4 was truly haunted. While the results don't necessarily indicate that the route is haunted, as the route has neither the highest crash nor death rate, the likelihood of dying in a crash is statistically higher on this segment. According to the rumor even further, it is said that the souls of hurricane victims are the ones haunting the highway. A cool idea, but that's more likely false. Although the original route of I-4 was planned to run to St. Petersburg, the route is permanently complete and the interstate will most likely not be extended in either direction. The only future plans by FDOT on this route are to expand the amount of lanes in busy areas, which they have been doing for years at this point. That's all I've got for this episode of Interstates, I'll see you all next time when I cover Interstate 16.